sponsored by the Mike Morris Law Firm, 855 Mike Wins. Jason Carr Live starts now. Hello there. Welcome to Friday. You made it. As a uh, co-worker of mine used to say each and every Friday, you made it. Glad to see you. Uh, welcome to the 915-ish. Jason Carr Live. John Steckroth. What's going on, Jacob? How's, how's, the, how's the sinkhole? Smelly, but... Yeah. Okay. Well, Smelly. Still standing. So. Okay. All right, Jacob, who lives in Fraser, right next to the sinkhole, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals unanimously ruled against reinstating President Trump's travel ban executive order. The Department of Justice was arguing that the courts did not have oversight over the executive branch in matters of national security. The three-panel or three-judge panel disagreed. The court wrote, the government has pointed to no evidence that any alien from any of the countries named in the order has perpetrated a terrorist attack in the U.S. Rather than present evidence to explain the need for the executive order, the government has taken the position that we must not review its decision at all. The court rejected the government's position, saying there is no precedent, etc., etc. The president immediately took to Twitter, saying, see you in court. The security of our nation is at stake. Well, that's uh, the that's ante what, has been upped. Yep, we're we're looking at maybe going to the Supreme Court here soon. So uh, it, yeah. it depends if the Supreme Court wants to take the case, which I would assume they will. But uh, we're we're looking into it. So apparently, um, forgive me, I forget, I don't have that reporter's uh, Twitter handle in front of me. But apparently, um, the president was overheard or said to that reporter in the hallway in the White House that Solicitor General which would argue his point before SCOTUS is something he's going to decide on real quick. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Rosie's new Twitter photo, comedian and actress Rosie O'Donnell changed her um, avatar, her Twitter pic, to a picture of Steve Bannon with her face superimposed over his face. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> this one day after um, Chelsea Handler trolled the White House by standing in front at 1600 pen with Nordstrom bags. Mm -hmm. So this admittedly bizarre uh, postmodern era of wherever we're going is at full throttle. Yeah, yeah, well, the Huffington Post put together a huge list of uh, women that would play the characters in the Trump administration, and uh, they're pretty great. And uh, to this point, if you've missed it, apparently, according to reports, the reason why the president was upset with the way that Sean Spicer was portrayed on Saturday Night Live last week is because he was portrayed by a woman, and thus, somehow, that makes him look weak. Weak was the word that was used, uh, which is a little, you know. uh, So, Saturday Night Live might go with casting women for all the uh, characters in administration. We've got Rachel Dratch to play White House Chief of Staff uh, Rance Priebus, uh, Kristen Wiig as Trump's son-in-law, Senior Advisor Jared Kushner. Who else we got here? Janine Garofalo. You know, um, what do you think about this? We talked about this yesterday on 915-ish. <laughs> <laughs> Betty White to play Jeff Sessions. Um, if you're watching this on playback later, uh, as opposed to watching it live, your comments are still welcome, uh, even though you may have missed us by a minute, ten minutes, or it's tomorrow. It's Saturday already, and you're just finally getting around to watching this on Click On or on Facebook. Uh, by all, that's a good one. By all means, let us know what you think. Ellen DeGeneres as Vice President Pence. That would be something else. So the lights on top of Ford Field uh, apparently are so bright, the LEDs, that 900 people thus far have signed a petition basically saying, hey, Detroit Lions, shut off your exterior, your porch lights. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. You come down 96, I mean, just the whole city is lit up in this blue, purplish glow. Uh, I don't live that close to the stadium, so I don't see it, but I would imagine having having a lot of that light pollution coming through your window and keeping you up. Definitely bright enough. Well, that's, uh, you know, we talked about this on, on 
Local 4 News today, and I think we had five reactions. Four of them were like, keep the lights, but you would naturally assume that those four people probably live nowhere near the stadium. No, of course not. Um, but it's, it's a little overwhelming. I mean, we're not living in Las Vegas. It's, uh, oh, but I, we have casinos. Well, we, we, yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Um, from the Blue Roof to Blueberries, authorities are investigating a blueberry heist in Canada where, in which $100,000 worth of fruit stolen out of a commercial refrigeration truck in Hamilton, Ontario and driven to Toronto. The truck has since been recovered. The boosted blueberry treasure stolen sometime between 3 and 11.30 on Sunday. They have a list of suspects yes. beginning with uh, well, George Clooney and Brad Pitt and a crew of ne'er-do-wells. Well, uh, actually we have uh, this This bear is a suspect. Um, I have this very suspicious looking girl. Um, and, and then this- Violet, course, you're, tur you're turning Violet. <laughs> and then this cereal box character, uh, I think might also be the culprit. And I actually found this, which is uh, quite interesting. Let's take a quick look. Mosey on over here to Cowboy Cornelius. He is the blueberry king, Cornelius Williams. What's going on? Well, we were just selling blueberries. We, these were picked yesterday, and I drove all night to get here so that you can have farm fresh blueberries right from the farm. Look at Vic is uh, is already picked out his quart. It's a quart, right? Right. Pint. Pint. I'm sorry. Pint. Pint. <laughs> uh, what do these sell for? My berries are four dollars, two for seven. Where, where did these go? What are you doing back there? <laughs> uh, what is the secret to living a long and healthy life? Eating a lot of blueberries and getting a lot of rest. Yeah, is that it? How did how did you become the the and, get it, and getting your food from the farmers markets because you need to eat what comes from the farm, and that's the best place to get it. You got to deal directly with the farmers. There you have it, Vic. Come on up. Let's get a shot. We were talking about we don't often see blueberries um, unpicked. We always see them in the pint, but uh, there you have it. There, you know you can you can buy used clothes, used shoes, and used cars, but you can't buy used food. We got to get serious about what we eat. <laughs> you should put that on a t-shirt, really. You can buy used cars, but you can't buy used food. Mosey. Where'd you dig that out? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and right, right on yeah, cue. Can right you hear it? Right on cue. Here we go. Um, yeah, that was a great segment. The, I'm putting him as the prime suspect. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the culprit. The Blueberry King? Yep, that's him. <laughs> uh, personal Tinder app. Lots of people have used Tinder with little success. Now, one man named John Steckroth developed his own form of Tinder where he's literally the only available man. How did you do this? Oh, well, if we're going to play that game, let's take a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shinder is the brilliant work of entrepreneur, author, product designer, motivational speaker, and all around jokester Shed Shamoove? Shamoove? Shamoove, I think it is. Shed Shamoove. The tagline, quality, not quantity, and it's very real. The 45-year-old is using it to find love on Valentine's Day. He's already had 100 matches. So it's a site just for, just for him. Just for him, yeah. Pretty smart. <laughs> All you can drink beer for a buck, or technically like 88 cents American, something like that. Yeah. I wonder if the beer's any good. Uh, I don't know. There's actually a lot of different options. You can get beer. I believe you can get wine as well. Um, can we show, do we have the beer? No, I've got a picture of the, uh, you got the a picture place. Of the place. Yeah, it's at Volt in Japan. It says you can get a variety of drinks, beers, wines. It looks like a converted liquor. pizza hut. Does it, it not look like a, a, like a pizza hut? Definitely, you know that there's a whole site devoted to the converted guy pizza huts? A book of, huh? Yeah, the guy published a book of buildings that were converted into pizza huts. Did so we how not long do that you, on the show? Huh? Did we do that one day? I remember the pizza, looking at yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm pretty sure that we did that. Yeah. But that is, that, oh, can you put it back up? Yeah. We're just going to sit here for um, however long it takes uh, to watch the audience, the live audience, go up. No, no, put, okay, I'm seeing it delayed here. Um, so here, the deal here is that you can, for 10 minutes, you get to drink all the beer yep. you can stomach, and then you have to buy another 10 minutes in order to continue to have the free beer. Is the second 10 minutes a uh, dollar fifty? Well, not the free beer, all the beer you can <laughs> so drink. It's a dollar for every 10 minutes, basically. But okay. in that 10 minutes, you can drink as much as you want, and you have to finish one before you can have another. Got to go for the high score. Which, how much, how much beer do you think? I mean, you're 28. How much beer do you think you can drink in 20 minutes? If I'm trying, yeah. I could put them out of business. 
You could put them out of business? Nah, probably not. But no, I, you know, we'll make it a quick 10 minutes. And once you have a few, it's like... <laughs> Can we show the uh, graphic again? Yeah, there it is. It does look a piece of I wonder what else they serve. A very, you know, a very odd name. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is just weird all the way around. All you can drink in Tokyo, 10 minute plan. Volks, no. not folks, but Volks. Dennis Moore is asking if uh, your assistants, uh, no, we're, we're just sitting. Yeah, we're not short or anything. But you can't say that anymore, Dennis. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm not, not sure. The terminology anymore. has. Uh, we are sitting though. Todd Coleman um, and his wife Tammy are going to see a Fifty Shades of Grey, or Fifty Shades Darker, I should say. Yeah, uh, Ian Rhodes, our uh, uh, operations manager, wrote a actually great review uh, that's on ClickOn. Really? Yeah, he, what took, his, he took his <laughs> wife to go see that at the premiere or whatever, and uh, he, wrote a, he wrote a review. <laughs> yeah, do we have a, a graphic for that? I don't. I didn't. No? No, I don't. And what, what is Ian saying about Fifty Shades Darker? He says uh, you should take your date to see it on Valentine's Day. For, uh, and right? for what Dave, reason? Dave, you took a look at it. I didn't get a chance. Dave, uh, why is Ian e Engineering saying that, that it's a go for date night to Fifty Shades Darker? Uh, Ian enjoyed the erotic scenes. There it is. There it is. All right. You know what? Let's take a look at, uh, at what we got here. Um, you know that? Yeah, hey, look at it. Is that an eagle? We love the eagle, Pam. I think that's an eagle. Sleeping. There were actually two eagles yesterday. Like full grown bald eagles. Well, yeah, both parents would yeah, still be checking in. Okay. All right. So, uh, Fifty Shades of, of Darker Gray. <laughs> so, Fifty Shades Darker. I read reviews. Horrendous reviews on RottenTomatoes.com. Really? Like 7%. Certified fresh. Sub, look it up. Look, go to. We're uh, we're looking. For I can't the, even. The I can't even do this with a straight face. Right now. <laughs> Talking about Fifty Shades Darker, Jim. I'm covering. I'm covering my face. Oh, hold on. I think I got it here. <laughs> he said, "I don't blame you." So here is uh, here's the article we've got. Yeah, let's grab Ian. Where is he? Yeah, go yeah. get Ian. Here okay. You go, by Ian Rhodes. Real question, why wouldn't you, right off the bat, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you what? Take your date. To see well, I would hope so. I hope you don't go see it by yourself. Hey, you that would what? be creepy. You know, people <laughs> can do what they want. You know? Can you scroll up? Is that it? Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the top of it. And then, okay. Uh, he has this whole write-up about why you should go see it. We're trying to get Ian over here so he can uh, break it down for us. Way in. That's interesting. One of the reviewers on, that was aggregated on Rotten Tomatoes, which is the, they collect all the movie reviews in one place and assign a score. One of the viewers said something like, this is a very, 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 very bad movie. Do you want to come <laughs> defend yourself? There's a mic right there. Here comes E-Engineering, Director of Operations at WDIV, and also... Um, Moonlighting film critic, specializing in Valentine's Day fair. What, uh, what, okay, so, why, so what's the question? Okay, so Fifty Shades of Grey was bad, but it was like so bad it was good. I keep reading and hearing that, that Fifty Shades Darker is so bad, it's just bad. It's bad in what context though? So if you're going to see this movie, what are you expecting to get out of it? Because I'm not, I'm not expecting like an Oscar winner, right? So I wrote a review for the website, and it's basically said, if your wife or significant other asks you to go see this movie, you, you probably should. Because I don't see what the downside of going to see this movie is. With well, there's that. Other. I mean, it's not like the wife is dragging you to see Pride and Prejudice or Fried Green Tomatoes. Or... Yeah, I mean, here's exactly what I said. I'll try to keep it very clean and say exactly what I said in the article. <laughs> I've never hung out with guys, and I could be wrong, I don't want to lump everybody together, but I've never hung out with a bunch of guys, and someone was like, man, that movie was way too sexy. I, I just couldn't watch it, it was way too sexy. Well, that that's what this movie is, you know that's what it is going into it, and, um, you know, so 
what are you really complaining about if you have to go see it with your significant other? Now, I'm not saying, like, let's all get together and go see Fifty Shades Darker together. Well, I, that's what the ladies did. Remember the last time? Well, the sure. ladies were forming little clubs, and they were going to see that's that. That's fine. And, oh, no, no, no. That was Magic Mike. I'm sorry. That was oh. Magic Mike. But I, I'm just saying, if, if your spouse says, yeah, let's, let's, let's go see it, I'm like, okay. Who yeah. knows what could happen? Enough said. All right. Ian Rhodes, you can read his article on Click On and why you should go see Fifty Shades Darker with your uh, wife, your girlfriend, your significant other, whatever the case may be. Thank you. See, that's how you, you're the complete, you're the real deal as operations manager when you can br branch out into entertainment, write movie reviews mm -hmm. about Oscar winners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so what do we have next here? Um, newspaper animals. Using nothing but everyday newspaper, expert paper artist Shay Hitosuyama. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. Uh, crafts realistic, exquisitely detailed sculptures of the animal kingdom to create each creature, he skillfully binds rolled and twisted pieces of wet newspaper to each other by varying the thickness and contours. Uh, she, rather, I'm sorry, she is able to precisely produce any figure she desired. Yeah, it's uh, pretty incredible. It doesn't even look like newspaper, really. Is it like pa papier-mâché? Uh, yeah. Kind of guess you said she rolls them up together. Remember the Seinfeld? Papier-mâché. Papier as opposed to paper-mâché? Pa I mean, the real question is, when print journalism dies, what are people going to lay down on their floors when they paint? And what are we going to make uh, all this stuff out of? Helen said, hey, my husband likes the movie Fried Green Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Coleman's are joshing each other on our page, talking about keep your hands to yourself and that sort of thing. Yeah. But they say that they will give us a follow-up, okay. presuming that they saw the first one. Watching from Bear, Delaware, says Paul Martin. Wow. Yeah. Delaware. Tanya, I took Taryn to see the first one. And, um, yeah. I don't know about this one. <laughs> <laughs> Bill says, I love Conway violated ethics by mentioning Ivanka Trump's clothing. Hillary kills six people and share government info with the world. This was ethical, rather. So there are obviously passionate opinions on both sides of the issue. We can be a forum uh, for discussing what's ethical, what's not ethical. And the nice thing about this is that once we're no longer live, it archives. But the comments are still always in real time. You could post a comment. If you're looking at this in the archive and it's two years from now into 2019, you can still get on there and write a comment. Yeah, and people will still get back to you. I mean, yeah, that's the, that that's the crazy forth. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, some more Fifty Shades. People get worked up about it. They care. What about the blueberries or Fifty Shades? Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades. Now, I used to do readings. I don't of know Fifty Shades? This. Yeah, when I, when I worked in the hostel in Budapest. Before oh boy, we, here we go with the we go out, Before we go out, uh, I mean, this was when the f book first came out. There were copies everywhere. You'd go to any hostel in Europe and there would be people leave their books behind. And so we had a few copies. Before we go out, I used to grab one and just st and open to a page and start. And people would sit down and listen. It was always a good time. I would be suspicious of any copy of E.L. James' Fifty uh -huh. Shades of Grey that was left behind. Yep. Well... <laughs> All right, um, Susan. Imagine that we got through a Friday show and we did not have to to be interrupted by TV's Ken. It yeah, was, it was, it's over there, quiet. I think it's he wasn't feeling well yesterday. David, how are we doing on uh, Click On? Seriously? Good, uh, good. No, he's kidding. Live, good live streaming audience on Click On. Everybody that's watching on Facebook right now, can we do a little experiment? Seriously, can you completely abandon Facebook? <laughs> Shut this off of Facebook and go over to the Click On live stream. Go to clickondetroit.com, find this. Is that on the homepage? It's on the homepage. It's, first, it be the, first thing yeah. you see on the homepage, live stream right now. Click on that and watch it on, on Click On. Bail completely on Facebook right now, this instant, and go over to Click On and let's see what we can do to the numbers there. Just as a pure Friday experiment. I, the, the numbers you probably are don't even. You probably don't. Everybody's leaving? You, you're not listening to me. You're probably... I, 
Nah, nah. See that we still got. We're over. It's still the same. Yeah, yeah. They're still there. They're not listening to me. There's no rhyme or Nobody reason listens to this Facebook to me. Live. I don't get it. Huh? I don't understand. You tell people just shut this off. Don't don't watch this. Don't look go, at me. Go, go look at it on ClickOnDetroit.com. Tell me if the quality is any better or different or you like it better. Or... I wonder about the streaming quality. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's how something is, interesting. Is anybody listening to us at all? <laughs> <laughs> A few people, like what, three? Four. Four. <laughs> all right, you know what we have to do is we have to just cut this off. Can we just cut the Facebook feed right now? Uh, no, actually, because if we cut this, then, well. And then click on cuts. It. There's ways, but. They're dropping a little. See, the, now Paul Martin's got a, a very good point. Facebook is easier on the phone. Oh, yeah. He's, okay, he's already yeah, on it. He's already that. in there. We have to um, presume that everybody is watching this on a laptop or a, a computer, yeah, like a desktop. Have a computer. So yeah. There you go. I mean. Still dropping like a stone. What are you, up to seven now? I feel like, I, you know, I, I actually went to L.A. for MC's training for the Jerry Lewis Telethon. Yeah? Yeah. 20, 21 years ago? That was quite the trip. I uh, talked to O.J. Simpson over his hedge in Brentwood. What did he was, say? Which was really bizarre. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, everybody have a great weekend. Um, it's Friday. You made it. We'll see you on the TV, live in the D at the top of the hour. Stay classy, Detroit. Jason Carr Live was sponsored by the Mike Morris Law Firm, 855 Mike Wins.